Senator Payne, thanks very much for your time today. Good evening, Lee. Do you feel like to make it in politics, you've had to keep men's secrets? I wouldn't describe it that way, uh, actually. I do think making it in politics, as you put it, for anyone, um, women and men, frankly, is, uh, is a difficult process. Uh, I um, spent some time in endeavouring to, uh, to be pre-selected for the parliament myself, and I've often been asked whether that was because of my gender, and I've often said in response to that, at the time, I actually felt it was more about my age. You're the Minister for Women. Why didn't you attend the march today? Uh, Lee, uh, both the Prime Minister and I offered uh, the opportunity to, uh, to meet with uh, the organisers of uh, today's protest uh, on a number of occasions and in a number of contexts, and they, they, those offers were very politely declined. That's, uh, that's a matter for them. But, but I just want to know why you didn't the, go to the uh, actual march. Indeed, and throughout the year, of course, we meet hundreds and hundreds of people. I don't normally attend marches. The Prime Minister does not normally attend marches, but we are very, very willing to engage on the issues. I've been doing that consistently in this role. I've done it again uh, this afternoon in meetings, particularly with people concerned about matters of family and domestic violence and uh, legal services in support of those. Uh, that is part of what we do every single day here. Uh, and those offers to meet still stand. I get that maybe there's a fear of the optics of being booed and, and so on, but doesn't that come with the territory of being a politician and isn't there almost an obligation to attend a rally of thousands of women as the Minister for Women? I wouldn't call it a fear of, uh, of the optics. Uh, I've ex indicated to you um, the circumstances uh, today uh, and uh, I'm very open, very willing to, to meet with the organisers of today's rally, as, frankly, Lee is the Prime Minister. Uh, that is an offer which she has made and uh, which we would hope uh, would be taken up. But if it is not, uh, then we will take up the issues that are raised. I think there's more than 13 points identified in the petition that has been uh, presented today. Day, we'll take up those issues. They are already very much part of the work that we are doing, in many cases, not in all, and there are some which, we, uh, which I would like to, uh, to speak with colleagues about and to see what uh, opportunities are available for us to address those as well. Why hasn't there been any action yet regarding the Sex Discrimination Commissioner's report on workplace sexual harassment? The government's had it for a year. Uh, well, we made uh, an announcement in the context of the Women's Economic Security Statement uh, last October uh, on a number of those recommendations. And to be fair, Lee, uh, there's a number of issues throughout 2020 which were not progressed uh, in the context of government response uh, to COVID. And we're not the only government in Australia or the only government in the world who has had to deal with a number of those delays. Should we expect to see um, those uh, recommendations implemented before the next election? Uh, I think those recommendations which government chooses to adopt uh, will most certainly be agreed to and implemented uh, before the next election. Whether they are um, all adopted will ultimately be a matter for government consideration. As Minister for Women, did the Prime Minister seek your counsel in recent weeks about the Brittany Higgins case? We have spoken often about the Brittany Higgins matter uh, and a number of the other issues uh, which uh, have been raised in the context of, of that. And what kind uh, and of, of counsel did he want from that to you? be the case? Uh, well, I don't go into my, uh, the nature of my private conversations with the Prime Minister, Lee. I never have. Uh, but uh, you, I can absolutely assure you, uh, as I think the Prime Minister would, uh, that we have discussed these issues, uh, including between the Prime Minister and myself, at the most senior levels of government have because we recognise their absolute seriousness and the uh, extraordinary uh, damage that, uh, that such uh, allegations have caused to people, uh, to Brittany Higgins in this case, and to other women that we know uh, are being, um, are being uh, are speaking about their experience as well. Have you personally contacted Brittany Higgins since that story broke to check on her welfare? Uh, no, I have not personally contacted Brittany Higgins. I don't know Ms Higgins, uh, Lee, but I uh, have worked closely with my colleagues as we have uh, sought to ensure there is an independent review in place, which of course is one of the, uh, one of the uh, uh, terms of the petition presented today, an independent review into, uh, in place in our workplace, led by the Sex Discrimination uh, Commissioner Kate Jenkins, uh, that we have uh, a support system, a, a, an appropriate support
support system uh, being determined through uh, the Deputy Secretary of Prime Minister and Cabinet, Stephanie Foster, uh, to ensure that staff in this building, not just women, but all staff in this building, feel that they have uh, what they need to support them if they need to raise issues, if they have matters they wish to disclose. Did the Prime Minister also seek your counsel as Minister for Women on the Christian Porter matter? Uh, again, these are these are matters which, of course, I have discussed with the uh, with the Prime Minister. And can uh, I ask... matters of the utmost seriousness? And can I ask again, as Minister for Women and the most senior woman in the parliamentary party, have you sought the views of your female colleagues, MPs and staffers, regarding Mr. Porter and whether they would like to see an independent inquiry into the allegations against him? Uh, we have had many discussions, uh, particularly amongst. Uh, um, colleagues uh, in this building in uh, in the recent weeks. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, those discussions uh, have canvassed a range of issues, including bringing to this workplace the experience that many of my colleagues have from other workplaces, their ability to uh, assist us uh, as a government. But Senator, uh, I asked a really, I asked, I just asked, sorry, I asked a particular. really simple question, which is: Have you canvassed the views of your female colleagues around? people's attitudes towards whether there should be an independent inquiry into the allegations against Christian Porter? Again, Lee, I don't disclose my private conversations with my colleagues, uh, nor with my Cabinet colleagues, uh, but those, these issues are of the utmost seriousness and they have been discussed uh, with many, many colleagues across the, uh, the last few weeks. And I'm sure, frankly, given the nature of the issues we are dealing with, they will continue to be discussed. And are all of the female members of the Parliamentary Liberal Party comfortable with Christian Porter remaining as Attorney-General? Um, Lee, I can't imagine that you would expect me to speak for every single um, member of the parliamentary, every single female member of the Parliamentary Liberal Party on, on all of their views, and I don't intend to do that. Most importantly, we absolutely... Uh, are clear, and I am absolutely clear, uh, in relation to the operation of the rule of law here, the presumption of innocence, but equally, equally, I am very aware of the importance of hearing the voices of and, and understanding the views of survivors who go through enormous trauma to bring those voices forward. Senator Payne, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Lee. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.